Hey there, Dark Star here. We're at the scenic Unalaska Dutch Harbor Airport to do a start and flight plan entry tutorial for the PC-12 and it will also apply mostly to the PC-24. At least the flight plan entry part will. This part may not. It's a little bit different. All right, first things first, you'd want to do your pre-flight. What I want to do is make sure my gear lever is down, my throttle's idle, my flaps are up, because I have all of those controls in my cockpit, and those might cause problems um, if they are not set. Then all we got to do to get started is get our batteries on, emergency power on, standby bus power on, avionics on, and then we will wait for the avionics to boot up. That usually takes just a second, and then as soon as it does, we can start getting our engine booted up. I'm also going to hold down the um, Alt key, and you see that plus sign there, I hope. Um, and then click on my avionics panel and I can get a bigger, clearer version of it. You can put these up on secondary monitors, that's why I had to drag it in from the other side. We're going to do the same thing on this one. And You don't have to do this for actually starting it, of course, but I um, thought it'd be nice for the tutorial here. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to get this bottom one up. Something I keep forgetting to mention in here is showing that this one gets a keyboard on it when you're doing data entry if you need to use that. Okay, so uh, we go run, engine start. That will get the engine started here. We see the starter ignition uh, comes up. We see NG starting to rise right about here. ITT should start coming up. Propeller starting to spin. Of course, we make sure our parking brake was on. I've got some call outs down here reminding us hey, we're on battery. We still need to get our generators on, right? So, as soon as this comes up, we can get our generators on. Now we can start working on our flight plan entry. Okay, so um, I didn't enter any initial flight plan into the EFB or a route when I started, so we're entering from scratch here just to show how this works. So when we click here, we see this goes purple, and we see a keyboard pop up down here. If this wasn't purple, you could use the keyboard on, on this panel to do your entry, but if you click this little guy, um, it can hopefully go purple for you, and you can just use your keyboard to type right there. All right, so I'm gonna enter uh, the airport code for Sitka, P-A-S-I, enter. All right, and now that's come up, and insert has highlighted, and we can insert those two points. All right, so I've already done my research, my flight plan. I'm ready to enter it. I'm going to enter my first waypoint is a nearby VOR, which is OME. And again, this is outlined in purple. OME, enter on my keyboard, went ahead and entered it. But you can also type OME and click the enter here. All right, now this joins to an airway. Let's zoom out here a little bit. This is your little zoom out button. You click and drag up to zoom out or down to zoom in. Um, so now let's say at OME, we wanted to join, uh, sorry, join the Victor 440 um, airway, and let's say we wanted to exit at 
Salus. Okay, so we pick that and we insert that. That's going to route us from here all the way down to Sitka. Okay, so that airway represents all of those waypoints up here. I'm just uh, clicking to drag down to scroll so you can see there's like a ton of waypoints here, right? Nope. We wouldn't actually fly this one, right? I'm just using this as an example. Okay. So now let's say at... Um, uh, here on Sitka, the Sitka... It's not a waypoint, but whatever you want to call that. Uh, you click on that, and this menu will come up. You can click Arrival Departure, and you can pick an arrival like RNAV 11, and we can enter it at Salus, which was our last waypoint before, so we should be good to go on that. All right. Now, I see two here with the discontinuity, so if I click the discontinuity and I delete it, um, then that discontinuity is gone, and Salus automatically joins up here. Okay, so I can activate that. There's all those waypoints, and then these last waypoints here are going to be from Salus on down, are part of that RNAV route. Okay. Now, let's say we wanted to walk through this uh, route and make sure everything's okay, but we want to zoom in a little bit so we can see some detail. We can hit skip waypoint to go to the next waypoint. This is up near Nome, Alaska. And then we can go skip to the next waypoint. Now, there's going to be a lot of waypoints along the way here. Okay, there was Salus, right? And now we're on the RNAV. And we can see the altitude restrictions on here uh, because in flight plan constraints we have these. So, so this, this will turn on and off some detail there. You can also... No, you can't. Yes, you can. There we go. It just takes a while. So if you want to see or not see the missed approach on your map here, you can you can turn that off. Uh, I'm in terrain relative mode. That's going to be here. So that's normal map mode, terrain relative mode. That tells us which, uh, like, orange and red terrain are, are getting to be dangerous. And green is generally okay, but you're getting close. And black means you're, I think, more than 1,000 feet above it. And you can also turn on weather here, of course. I don't know if we have any weather right now, but... All right, the other thing we want to do here is if we... In, if we get our altitude dialed in here, you can see I'm dialing in the altitude. Let's put it down to like 8,000 feet. Okay, so I've got my altitude here at 8,000 feet, and I can see that show up here now. Right. So, because they're in green, they're not altitude restrictions yet. These white ones are part of that route, uh, altitude restrictions. But we can also see that these don't have speed restrictions, per se. Right, it does have an FMS speed that it's going to use that's lower. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that's based on. I think it's there's some formula like distance from the airport and height above ground that causes the FMS to drive different speeds. Uh, but we can override both of those, right? So let's say at at this point on Salus we wanted to be lower, right? So we can go in and we can select cross. We can enter an altitude we want to be at, at above, or at below. So let's just say we wanted to, to go and be down at uh, 6,000 feet here, right? We can also set a speed restriction. Like, let's say we want to be 225 here. So now we can say apply those, right? And activate. And then, of course, you have to scroll your flight plan again. There we go. Okay, so now this says we want to be at 6,000 feet here. That will move our top of descent back a little bit to, to get down to here. 
right. and it's also at, at this point uh, before we get to this point it's going to lower our uh, target speed down to 225 as well and like you know at your waypoints near final here um I think this is at final, so you might want to set a, just a speed restriction here. It already has an altitude restriction built in. Uh, we might want to set this to be like 95, right? Although I, the FMS is going to have a built-in speed here. And you can see every time I'm in an input box, I get a keyboard input up here, right? So if I wasn't using this style of entry and I was here... Uh, well, can you? I, I think it's because I'm, I'm in here. But uh, let's go up here <laughs> and go 9.5 here. Yeah, that's entered. Um, and then uh, there's enter. So it doesn't it doesn't work. I guess well with this pop-out window version you you would need to do that in here if you're going to use that keyboard down there because otherwise it goes away all right apply that activate now we can see our speed restriction that's basically at the runway threshold I believe um, so there's some important points on the speed tape here right um, there's when you could put your gear down when you can put your flaps down and it's generally good to put some of those speed restrictions in here so that you can start getting your gear down and, and flaps out at appropriate times so like we could set across here of i think i think it's 160 is a lot of it so we can go enable keyboard entry mode now we're magenta 115 um i'm sorry 155 just want to be below 160. Right. So then at this point it would automatically slow down to 155. You can get your gear maybe and first notch your flaps out. Um, so on and so forth. You can set different, you, you can, you know, progressively slow down along different waypoints. Um, another thing you can do that's kind of interesting is you can set you can set other waypoints based on a place, bearing, and distance. Um, so the way you do that, uh, normally I like to do that with uh, like a visual approach, uh, but let's just use uh, this as an example. Right, so we want now to amend route after Salus, right? So we want a waypoint, let's say at place. I think we can do Salus. This may or may not work. Uh, bearing, uh, let's do 123 degrees. Uh, uh, we might want the inverse of that, I think. But whatever, um, whatever your your compass bearing is there, and then a distance, right? So like three nautical miles. Let's see if we enter that. Now we have a PBD place bearing distance waypoint here. Um, so let's zoom in and see what that looks like. So right now, uh, th I haven't activated this yet. So from Salus, it would go down to here and then go over. Okay. So like if you're doing, uh, if you're flying into an airport that doesn't have any waypoints and you want to add an extra one further out from the runway, you can find the runway bearing, which is kind of like if you're going to runway um, let's say uh, 36 the the bearing from there would be uh, 
180, right? So you'd want to go like your airport code slash 180 slash maybe 15, 15 nautical miles off from the airport. You want to get to that point and then line up with the, the runway. And again, it would be the reciprocal of a runway heading would be the bearing from that place to where you want to put the, way, the waypoint. That's why uh, 123 worked here. That's the course we were going to Salas. So that carried it out um, like however far, uh, what did I say, three nautical miles, right? Okay. So that's one way to enter custom waypoints relative to some other waypoint or airport or VOR. I'm glad the waypoint worked. I wasn't sure it, it would. I, I've never done that before, so it's good to know. Okay, I'm going to cancel that one out. All right, so uh, that's how you would enter custom flight plans. Uh, once you're happy with it, the next thing you might want to do is alter your cruise speed. You might want to set your cruise altitude. Uh, I don't really do anything here, but you can enter like, you know, two passengers and cargo of 500 pounds and then the compute will light up and it, it'll let you compute it. I don't know that it does anything with this information, but... Um, and then here is going to be your departure uh, uh, information. So, like, if we wanted to, we could, we could set this here. Uh, if you had a SID, that's where you would select it. And if you needed to change your arrival, you can go here. And you can select your arrival, uh, approach, star, whatever you're going to do. And that's about it for getting started and getting your flight plan entered. From there, you know, you would get your lights on, get your de-icing, when you get close enough to time, you know, to like cleared, cleared for departure, you might turn on your probes. You want to get your oxygen on, um, you know, all your lights, and off you would go. Good luck.